Jolie here, four seconds out with Vidal Riley here in Wembley. Um, never caught up with you before. Um, pleasure to meet you. How, how, how are you doing, man? Good, man. I'm doing good, doing a lot better. Things are looking bright, so yeah, I'm in a good mood today. You got me in a good mood. <laughs> I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but uh, obviously after Spurs at the weekend, I'm a Spurs fan as well. Uh, you know, it's, it's not all that good at the moment. No, it's not going well. You know what? It was a derby that didn't go our way, but... You know, one of my good friends, Roms, he's an Arsenal fan, so I'm happy for him. Yeah. But yeah, that's about as far as it goes. Really. Happy for him, happy for him. How's everything getting on with, I know you've got like Rolling Cheek, you got a podcast with um, Leon as well. How's everything going on that side and YouTube that's stuff? Going, that's going well. You know, it's a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things to, to keep up with. So, you know, just looking at expanded, expanding the team, getting some people in full time that can just, you know, help me with the load of things. And... I can focus on boxing because that's what I want to focus on but I understand other things have to grow at the same time and you can't put all your attention in so many places so I'm looking forward to growing the team getting some people working with me more and yeah just allowing the brand to continue to flourish really so has that been kind of like a little bit of a, a an issue trying to balance boxing with everything else kind of being I don't want to say influence because it's a bit of a cringe word, but do you know what I mean? No, I understand. You know, as things grow, you need to delegate more responsibilities to others. Otherwise, you're just going to crash and burn at, at the end of the day. You can't do everything. So it, it gets more and more difficult to balance as things grow in popularity, as things require more responsibility, demand. And I've acknowledged that early. It's not an excuse I'm going to use later on. Oh, the reason why I lost because I didn't hire people to help me. You know, it's just let's get out of the way, get it done early. And before we get back in the ring. So when we're in the ring, there's no excuses. It's just straight action. And everyone's playing their role, playing their part. Um, and obviously, I presume no injuries now. Everything's set, for, ready for the next chapter. Yeah, and that's the thing that I'm very happy about. Physically, doing well. Mentally, best I've ever been, which is more important. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Good to hear all those Spurs can sort of knock confidence mentally sometimes. Um, but yeah, obviously this past weekend we've seen the heavyweight division. Um, obviously the top of that, Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk fighting. Um, everyone's been really quick to get on to AJ, but what are your, what's your post-fight reactions to that? I think the fight went how it would go if AJ didn't land that power punch. Strength and power was his two biggest attributes going into the fight and I don't know if you didn't give him the opportunity to use them or he didn't try you know to use them but it was it was nullified and the result went how I expected it to go if it was a boxing match and it went the distance um, and AJ had already said that himself he's gonna look back at his game plan and switch it up and change it and I think that's the right thing to do at the end of the day he's at the level that he's at not for a no reason he's proved he can compete at that level also and someone with the resources the team that he has i'm sure he can make changes and he's going to have to if he wants to get his belts back do you think he should go into an instant rematch i think so i think he should go in go into a re instant rematch you don't want time to really dwell on these things you don't want to over analyze the fight as well sometimes you can over analyze and whilst you can still feel the punches see the guy's movement because after you've boxed someone, you can still see them in front of you if you, you know if you've been doing it long enough. So whilst he can still see that, get a feel for that, watch what worked, because he did have success in the fight. We can't say the whole fight was one-sided. He had success. Scrutinize the parts of success and try and create more rounds of those. And I think he can do that immediately. As for Usyk, um, a lot of people are already saying, you know, who's going to win out him and Fury, him and Deontay Wilder, him and Dillian White, and things like that. Um, do you think, you know, not talking about AJ, he can be one of the greatest heavyweights, obviously being that he's come from cruiserweight, undisputed there. Do you think he can do some serious uh, dent, put dent in the heavyweight division in the future? I think he already has. I think he's already dented the heavyweight division by coming up to the division and taking three of the f four major governing body belts. And... Um, to only have to have one piece of the puzzle missing, he's already left the dent. The division, the, the whole dynamics changed. People that were aiming for AJ have now switched their targets to Usyk. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know about him and Tyson Fury, Usyk and Fury. I think right now I'd say Fury because he's just a bigger person who can also box well, quite elusive. And you got to go with the good big guy over the good little guy. Um, but 
Usyk definitely beats Wilder in my opinion. He's, he doesn't have enough tools, I think, to get to Usyk and, and be able to adapt on the night as well because he's still learning a lot of new things and we have to see them against uh, Fury in from Wilder's case before we can say, okay, he can beat Usyk because Usyk, you know, is a problem. So, yeah. Does, uh, does Tyson beat Wilder again? Yes. I think Tyson Fury beats Wilder. Um, I don't think he's going to beat him in the same fashion he did in the second fight. I feel like this fight will be more competitive. I don't think he'll go to the final bell, but it's going to be more of a back and forth as opposed to Tyson just coming out dominating it from round one. I, I don't think that will happen again. Have you seen the shadow boxing in the sea and thought, yeah, this guy's new, he's different? Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's working on things that are going to be needed from Wilder's side anyway. You can see he's learning the technique and not just relying on raw power and athleticism. Fury's always going to do what Fury does. He's not going to change his training too much. But Sugar Hill at the same time, as we know, Kronk history, they like finishes. They like people to to get out of there as soon as they can. So, And we saw that in, in the second Fury Wilder fight. So I'm expecting Fury to come out aggressive again. He's going to come out with size. I can't see him. Yeah, he's going to come out with, with with his size and try and bully him again. But I think Wilder's just going to offer a bit more resistance because of how embarrassed he was last time. But a great fight that's going to be. You mentioned a moment ago Usyk's put a dent in the heavyweight division. Uh, someone who's put a dent in boxing is Jake Paul. Um, and he's and he's put a dent, kind of, uh, in, in Woodley's finger. He got the I love Jake Paul tattoo. I've just seen on Twitter the love is, is ink. I don't know if the whole thing's ink. Uh, you've seen that tattoo, I yeah, assume. Like, when I first saw it, it looked like um, pen. Yeah, it looked like pen. I got a few tattoos, so I kind of know what they look like. Uh, and I don't think that was real. But he wants that fight. He's not going to get that. I don't think he should get the tattoo f to fight Jake. It's just too much power. It's just like, here, man, you want some power here, have all of it. Like, why are you doing that for? But at the same time, I, I've never been paid like how he's got paid. So I guess if you taste that pay, you might want to taste it again. But I wouldn't get a tattoo for it. But if you're on either of those sides, in terms of like in the future, you're probably going to be the A side in a lot of your fights. Um, <coughs> be, because you will be kind of like the big money fight. Do you feel like he's only doing that so he can get, well, it obviously is so he can get that rematch um, and, and get another big page yet? Of course. We know MMA fighters is well documented. They don't get the biggest paydays even at the heights of their career. And he can make way more now than he did when he was dominating the UFC worldweight division. So why not try and get one more payday if you can? I just can't see Jake fighting him. I think Jake's trolling him the whole way and just making him get his name on his skin because he can and he knows that's how desperate he is. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Jake will fight him again anyway. So we'll see. But I doubt it. Last question. Um, why is YouTube boxing good for traditional boxing? It can be quite a long-winded answer yeah, if you want. Because of the exposure, because it gets people talking about boxing full stop, and we've needed something that attracts people to talk about the sport. We don't always see the greatest fights. We don't always see the best go against the best in their primes. And stuff like that was keeping the sport alive in the past. Now we live in a world with social media. We live in a world where everyone's on their phone every day, clicking on each app. Boxing needs to be on those apps. The way boxing has found itself onto those apps and to be exposed to different demographics is through the YouTube boxing. So you can't really frown on it, but I always say that the people that are competing in the social media realm of boxing should keep a respect for the fighters that have put their life into it because it's not the same thing. Do what you, you're doing because it's great what you're doing, but then try not to step on the toes too much or show any disrespect to the fighters who have put their life into it because that's when people can turn sour towards them and you know say that what they're doing is bad but it's not bad it just has to be a level of respect and a border that's not crossed do you feel like you've kind of paved the way in that sense to from youtube boxing to kind of traditional because you already were a boxer but you've come through that way if that makes sense i think um in my position i'm definitely a pioneer um I've contributed, I'd say, to the YouTube boxing becoming big enough to, to be a thing f through coaching, you know, the biggest guy to do it. And now it's time for me to use that in the traditional world. And again, being a pioneer, you don't always get 
your accolades and recognition immediately that's fine because we're here to stay so it will come but um you know a lot of people call me a youtuber and i'm like this just doesn't make any sense but i get it um and now it's just time to show people look traditionally i'll beat you up and socially i'll get more views than you that's it Bye.